pray the Lord, brethren, and God is good that we are meeting again and interacting with the Word of God. And this time round, the message is at the testimony of the woman, about the woman that came and anointed the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we think about do what you can as long as you are still alive. And this portion of scripture is coming from the gospel according to Matthew, Mark, I mean, Mark chapter 14, verses 3 onwards. And the Bible says, And being in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came having an alabaster flask of a very costly oil of spinega. Then she brought the flask and poured it on his head. But there were some who were indignant among themselves and said, Why was this why were this fragrant oil wasted? Now verse 5, the Bible says, For it might have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor. And they criticized her sharply. Verse 6, But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a good work for me for you have the poor with you always and whenever you wish you may do to them good but me you do not have me always she has done what she could she has come she has come beforehand to anoint my body for burial assuredly I repeat verse 9. Assuredly, I say to you, wherever this gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be told as a memorial to her. Praise God, brethren. This is a message that I thought I should share this particular time. Jesus makes mention and says she has done what she could. And remember, this woman is coming to anoint the Lord Jesus Christ and the Jewish culture is does not allow women in the public. Jewish culture looks at women as nobodies. But this particular woman beats all those odds and enters this house where Jesus is reclining at the table with the guests. And the Bible is saying, is telling us that Jesus is in a house of a man called Simon. And we have because we had we have so many Simons in the Bible, so the Bible is saying this Simon had, at one time had been a leper and maybe healed, and so he was hosting the Lord Jesus Christ in his house. And Jesus did not move alone. He was with the people all around him, those that followed him because he, broke, he proclaimed good news. And among them could have been the apostles, I mean the disciples, the people that he taught. And remember, there were 12 in the number and several others. And so she brought, the Bible says, costly oil that she had bought and brought it to anoint Jesus' head. And remember, Jesus is now about to wind his ministry. Now, what the Bible is saying is that she brings the oil and pours it on Jesus' head and the fragrance, good aroma, spreads in the house. But some people did not enjoy it. They said, no, 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 no. This could have been sold and money given to the poor. But Jesus Christ rebukes them. In verse 6, he says, let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a good thing for me, a good work for me. How I pray that at one moment, that in our ministry, in our work, in our engagements, we do something good for the Lord. 
and so that we can be commended for what we have done. It's my prayer one of these days that God help me that something that I'll be able to do, something that I'll be able to, I'll be able to present, and even as I speak to you now, my God commends me and says, yes, he has done something good, a good work for me. And so my brethren, anybody listening, anybody watching this, may God enable you to do something good that the Lord will be able to commend you for the good that you have done. And so Jesus says, for you have the poor with you always, and whatever you wish, you can do to them. But me, you do not have me always. Not that Jesus didn't care about the poor, but this was, there was time for everything. And Jesus was trying to show these people, these men and women, whoever they were, that you can do commendable works for the poor because you have them always. So you go and do something good for whoever is in need. But at this particular time, Jesus is saying she has done what she could. And so I come with a theme, do what you can. As long as you are still able, do what you can. As long as you are still alive, do what you can. Whatever the situations, whatever the odds, do what you can. Whatever the barriers that can be, maybe cultural barriers, maybe financial barriers, maybe social barriers, name them, maybe political barriers, in the Lord's vineyard, do what you can. And so, my brothers and sisters, the message is, while you are still here, this woman ran, came, and found Jesus in this man's house, but she beat the odds. Being a woman in the culture there, could not permit her to do anything. Being a woman, maybe many, many things could have happened. And in other, in other Gospels, they mentioned she could have been a prostitute. But listen, in her flawlessness, in her flawed uh, character, the Lord Jesus Christ permitted her to come closer and she anointed his head. And so, friends, Jesus says, Assuredly, I said to you, whenever this gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will be told of her, in the memorial of her. It just energizes me to do something good. If you are able, do something good, because you never know to whom you are doing it. Be it a man or woman, poor, rich, young or old. But the Bible is saying that something good that you have done, and the Lord Jesus Christ is testifying to it, that actually in her memorial it will be told. So do something today that will be told about you tomorrow. Do something good today that somebody will talk about it the next day. And so as we are, enga we are engaging ourselves during our era, during our time, this is our generation, May God enable us to do something. And in Matthew chapter 25, there's something that is commended that there were people that were given talents and, uh, you know, they go and invest and bring back the profits. And in Matthew, this gospel, Matthew 25, verse 21, the Bible talks about a master who says to a servant that had done well, says, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. That at one moment, the life that you have used here, the money that you have used here, the good actions that you have exhibited while you are still here on earth, our Lord, up in heaven, when time comes and we are all there assembled, he will say, come, come in, good and faithful servant. Because you have done what you can for the gospel of Christ. And so I invite all of you. I invite everyone. And as I invite everyone, I invite myself to do what I can. That in the end, I will be among those that will be told, come in, good and faithful servant. Like this woman did what she could. And Jesus says she has done what she could. And this gospel will be preached about her. And I want to wind up 
by Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. And this Colossians 3, 23, the Bible has something it tells me and it tells you. And it says, Colossians 3, 23, the Bible says, And whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that from the Lord, you will receive a reward of the inheritance for you serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, do whatever. Work hard. Work hard and cheerfully at whatever you do. Are you serving the Lord? Do it cheerfully. Are you working in some office? Are you serving people? Are you leading anywhere? Do it cheerfully as though you were working for the Lord. And so, friends, I encourage myself as I serve in St. Andrew's Cathedral as the vicar and sub dean, I must work cheerfully. And as you work, wherever you are, as you do your work, do it cheerfully and heartily as though you are working for the Lord. This woman has taught me a great deal, and Paul mentioned something working hard and doing everything heartily and cheerfully. And so I invite you during this generation, which is heartless, do it heartily. Show a difference among the people that you live, parents among the children, children among your parents, with your parents, and anybody else out there to make a difference for our country, to make a difference for our generation. May God bless you as you contemplate on these very important uh, words that the Lord Jesus Christ has taught us, and as Paul mentions it, may God be with you. Do something good that will be remembered for the good that you have done. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.